What's going on everyone, Jake here from Half Chrome. And today I wanna to walk through uh, just kind of a quick review for the part 107 exam. So let's say you've been studying, you just want a quick review to make sure you're ready for the test. I put this together for my students. Now I teach a class on the part 107 and this is something I do right before my students take the test for me. And if they can pass the test for me, then I take them to the airport where they can take the actual 107. So these are some points that I found up here on the exam itself. And I just wanna kind of clarify some little things and give you some tips and tricks to kind of help make sure you're successful. I do have a handful of other videos that I think might be useful. I have a great review on all of the numbers that you kind of need to know for the exam. And I do walk through the FAA practice test and kind of explain the answers. If you haven't seen those, check the link down below. I also have some useful things like a legend. You absolutely need legend and a test supplement and even a condensed supplement. So you don't have to print the whole darn thing. I even have specialized videos on the weather, the METAR charts, uh, airspace, reading sectional charts, and those are for Patreon. So if you're interested, again, check the link below. I've got tons of information to help prepare you for this exam. Anyway, let's get into some of these tips and tricks to help make sure that you pass this test. Now, I have seen a handful of safety questions. One of the questions always is, what do you do if something happens and you have to maintain control of your aircraft? That's really point number one. Make sure you never put anyone or anything in danger. And if you're going to load anything or drop anything from your UAV, make sure you're not creating a hazard uh, with any of those payloads. You, you don't have to report all incidents to the FAA, only if it's something serious and injury. Uh, something like a cut or someone loses consciousness, or if it, if the damage to people or property exceeds $500. Now that does not include your drone and you don't have to report everything. Um, you know, if you, you have some sort of minor incident, uh, you'd only have to report it if it's been requested, right? So like if you had to go to 450 feet to avoid some sort of obstacle, the FAA doesn't want you to report that unless they ask for it. You cannot drink alcohol and fly. Eight hours have to have passed and you have to have a blood alcohol content of 0 0.04 or lower. Both of those things have to be true. And like I said before, you don't have to report minor incidents unless it's requested to the FAA. Okay, so airspace can be tricky. Um, and my advice to you is use the legend, right? The legend will tell you, is it class B? Is it class C? Is it class D? Is it class E at the, sur at the surface? Do you remember all those lines? You know, is it, is it a solid blue? Is it a dashed magenta? How do you remember all that stuff? Well, you don't have to. The legend is there. You have it. Use it. Remember, B, C, and D always need uh, clearance. So you do have to request that if you're flying in that airspace. In class E, you only need clearance if you're flying in one of those class E's at the surface. That's the dash magenta line which you don't have to know because it's on the legend, which you get when you're taking the test. So if it is class G airspace or class E airspace, generally you don't need clearance for that. Now there are a handful of other special airspaces and they're pretty easy to understand. Make sure you don't fly in anything that's prohibited. Other airspaces, some of them you can fly in if they're if they're not active, right? And how do you get that information? The chart supplement, right? The, uh, the extra bits of that chart will tell you uh, they've got all sorts of great information in the chart supplement so um, usually that's the answer if you're trying to find information that isn't just on the chart itself now we've had some questions about uh, vr and ir routes vr routes visual routes those are the ones that tend to be lower in altitude and if there are four numbers that means part of it could be under 1500 feet which means yes you absolutely have to pay attention ir routes uh, usually have three numbers and they're flown at higher altitudes. IR, meaning they're using instruments, not just relying on their vision. And a TFR, a temporary flight restriction, uh, those are issued for various reasons, right? If there's uh, some sort of hazard or if there's a, you know, a political figure or someone uh, coming into, into the area, they'll, they'll create a TFR. Uh, stadiums for events get TFRs, things like that. And that just means you can't fly. Um, and you can check online, right? You check, uh, that they say 1-800 Wix brief, I think is what they suggest. Just actually what you really need to do is just type in uh, TFRs and uh, they'll pop up for you. There are always questions about stable versus unstable air. So let's just kind of break it down. Unstable air uh, basically is created with turbulence, right? There's air currents and things. Um, and because the air is moving, generally you can have good visibility because if there are any fog or smoke, it just kind of gets, it gets cleared out. You'll get those cumulus clouds. Uh, those are now, you know, your cumulonimbus clouds, those are your storm clouds, the big puffy clouds. Um, they say showery precipitation, right? That's what the FAA says. That just means it's, it's basically raining hard. 
versus stable air. Stable air where the air is just not moving a lot. Uh, we call that smooth air. You'll see stratus clouds. They're kind of those layered clouds. Uh, the visibility may be poor, right? Because the air isn't moving through. If there's haze or fog or smoke. It just kind of stays there and doesn't move out of the way. Now you might have light or continuous precipitation um, because again, the, the currents aren't moving the air through quickly. Okay, metars, yes, they are a pain, but really kind of once you break them down, they make a lot of sense. Um, my suggestion is to kind of look for some of the clues, right? We're going to start with the station ID, then you have the time and the date, followed by all of the wind information. Then we have your statute miles of visibility, um, and then we talk about some of the weather conditions and cloud conditions. Uh, we've got your temperature and dew point, right? Anytime you see that slash, those two things. Remember, if they're close together, you're going to get fog. Um, then we have your altimeter reading and then followed by your remarks if there are any additional things. Now here, this, this is confusing, right? It, there, it's a lot, um, but look for the clues, right? K, right? If you see the K, then you know it's going to start with that. Uh, what airport are we talking about? Z, Z is for Zulu time, right? Time and date. Uh, KT is not, not wind speed sm statute miles we're talking about visibility and then you have some of the other things a right if you see a i know a is altimeter setting so go with that and then the slash of course uh so your temperature and dew point so just kind of look for those clues like i said zulu time knots statute miles altimeter i tell my students look for those letters and then remember what they correspond to. And then you have a handful of the different codes that you need to know. These are some of the more common ones I've seen, and they generally uh, make sense, right? BR, MIST is kind of the one that doesn't. Um, P for plus, M for minus, right? So uh, we're talking about degrees. I don't know why I don't use the plus sign or the minus sign for that, but they don't. Uh, plus and the minus sign generally means like heavy or light, light, light rain or maybe light showers and heavy thunderstorms or heavy snow, stuff like that. There are always high and low density altitude. And if you're not a pilot, this tends to be confusing, right? So I always tell my students to think of high density altitude, think of high altitude where you have the low atmospheric pressure, right? You have thin air. If, you're ever, if you've ever been in the mountains, you kind of experience that it's harder to breathe. It's harder to fly. High temperature and high humidity often can create those conditions. But just remember thin air, not good for your drone versus low density altitude or just think of low altitude, right? Low elevations, high atmospheric pressure, uh, lower temperature and lower humidity you can go with those. Um, and that's where your air is thicker and it's more efficient for your drone. It's easier for your drone to fly. That is good. Other things to note, um, guys, all readings are true, not magnetic. That might be a question. All numbers on your charts are in MSL, not AGL, unless they're in parentheses, right? If you see in parentheses, that's an AGL number. Uh, the remote pilot in command is almost always the answer to a question. If they ask who is responsible for blah, the answer is the remote pilot in command. Um, so just, just kind of note that there should be like three or four questions about that. That should be a gimme. And I cannot say this enough use the legend this legend the one that you're looking at right here super important there's a section on airspace there's a section on airports there's a section on airport data there's a section on obstructions use this this is your reference point find this in the packet that they give you and note it uh, because this is going to help you this can be so helpful when you're taking the test check the link down below i've got if you want to print out the legend if you want to print out the supplement if you want more information you want more videos uh, we've got them for you and you have a question, hit me up. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. We also do reviews on drones, whether you're looking for a drone that's, you know, a beginner uh, entry level drone, something you kind of get started uh, taking pictures and videos with, or if you're looking for maybe a more professional rig, um, I've got reviews on all sorts of different drones. So, so certainly check those out as well. And if you want more detailed information, don't forget, um, there's a link down below to our Patreon, to our, our website, where we have more info for you on this test and on drones in general. Take a look on that test.